Welcome back to the shop. This week we're going to be talking about some advice that I want to offer in relation to motorcycle buying and specifically adventure motorcycle buying. This is probably one of the questions that I get asked the most here in the comments section or on other social media channels. So I thought I would make an attempt to at least offer some guidance and some advice in this area. Okay, so let's get started in relation to motorcycle adventure buying. When you start, what I would highly recommend is start by setting a budget. Whether your budget is $2,500 or $25,000, I think it's very important to start with one. And the reason why I think that's so important is because it's all too easy as you start shopping around, if your budget is say $2,500, to find something that is $3,000 and slightly newer, slightly lower mileage, and next thing you know, your budget goes from 2,500 to 3,000, 3,000 to 3,500, and it can almost never stop. And that same thing applies regardless of what your starting budget is. So I would highly recommend start by establishing that budget. Make sure that it's an amount that you can comfortably afford. In this style of motorcycling, the last thing you want is to be too worried about the motorcycle that you're taking on these trips, because in my opinion, at least, the core of these trips is really about the experiences that you're gonna have. You want to be able to take water crossings, you want to be able to do muddy runs and not worry about how the bike looks and be comfortable if it gets dirty or potentially even damaged or broken. Be confident in the fact that it can always be fixed. It's only a matter of time and money. Make sure that you accommodate both of those aspects. Okay, now that you've had your budget set, you have an idea of how much you want to spend. I think the next important step is really to establish what type of riding you're going to be doing the most. And I think honesty is a real key aspect in this regard. I think we all get into adventure motorcycle riding with ideas and plans of taking big cross-continental trips, multi-day trips, multi-week trips, or maybe even year-long trips. But the reality is that for most of us, that just doesn't happen. We wind up riding on the weekends, we wind up working around work or family schedules or other responsibilities that you might have. So if that's the case, make sure that you're spending an amount that is uh, proportionate to the amount of time that you're gonna be able to enjoy it. Make sure that in that budget, you're accommodating things like accessories that you're going to need or want and make it a comfortable experience for you both on the bike and also lodging, whether that's camping or whether that's staying in hotels. There's nothing worse than having a bike that is really nice and really capable, but you pushed your budget to get into it, and now all of a sudden you're forced to only ride it to work and back because you can't afford campgrounds or the fuel or the accessories that you need to go camping and things like that. So again, be honest with yourself the type of riding that you're going to do because if you're going to be doing more heavily off-road riding, then that's obviously going to push you more into a lighter or smaller bike. If you have to travel longer distances to get to the type of riding that you wanna do, or you're gonna be covering great distances to do the type of traveling that you wanna do, then you're probably gonna want something that's a little more comfortable, maybe has cruise control, and some of the niceties for those longer stretches of road. So keep that in mind. Once you've been honest with yourself in terms of the type of riding that you're going to be doing with the bike and then also you've established a budget, now you can start to narrow it down in terms of which bikes you want to look at and take a look at, either new or used, which is really the next aspect of the buying decision. Should you buy brand new or should you go with something used? I've covered some comparisons before, like the KLR 650 new versus a KTM 990 or 950 used you'd be really surprised how much depreciation works in your favor when you're shopping the market. Whether you should buy new or whether you should look used really comes down to, I think, how much you're willing to spend in terms of your time and in terms of your mechanical abilities. Whenever you buy used, it's really important that you're confident enough to make repairs on the motorcycle. The other thing to keep in mind, especially if you're looking at something like a KLR new versus a 950 used or something along those lines, is there's a very big difference in terms of the overall maintenance and repair costs. Parts are far more expensive on the European models. So if you do go with something used, just be prepared that you're gonna spend some of that money that you saved back into potentially parts or even just maintenance items. I've covered a few of the costs on the KTM here, and those costs are just you know dealership costs. Obviously you can shop around, but at the end of the day, there's just no way around the difference in price between uh, European brands and Japanese brands, for example. So I would certainly take into consideration those two aspects. And then once you have those two aspects in mind, 
then you can make your decision of whether you want to buy new or used. The next important piece I think is going to be the weight and the physical dimensions of the motorcycle that you're looking to buy. Now, you should try to find something that's very proportionate to your height and weight and also your confidence level. The more confident or experienced rider can tend to ride a taller or a heavier motorcycle more confidently just because they can rely on that experience and they don't have to rely so much on touching the ground, flat foot, or having to worry about picking the bike up in awkward situations because they've established the right technique over years of experience. So I would use that as well as a general guide. If you are shorter or if you are newer, I would recommend something smaller and lighter that you can confidently touch flat footed on. This will give you far more confidence, which will allow you to take a less than normal path when you wanna go out and go riding, which is really where the excitement and the fun is. So if you have something that's too big, too heavy, too tall, you're not going to wanna go into those areas because of how much effort it takes to pick the motorcycle up or if you're getting into a situation where you're crossing a log or something like that and you don't have the confidence because you can't touch the ground, you're not gonna hit that with the speed that you need to make it over, which is basically going to introduce the very scenario that you were worried about happening. So again, base that size and weight on your personal experience, your height, your weight, all of those aspects, and find something that you feel 100% confident on. Now I've covered the KTM 1090 in other videos and for me personally, I feel very comfortable and very confident on this motorcycle because it handles its weight so extremely well and it's so well balanced. That again comes with experience. So as you get more experience, you'll have that confidence, you'll have that comfort level and then the weight and the size will not be an issue. So if you're already there, feel free to jump into something like that because that dimensions and the uh, handling of the weight the balancing of the motorcycle will really come in handy in those scenarios once you have that experience. So unfortunately, I can't tell you exactly what weight or what seat height to look for. That's gonna vary dramatically, again, depending on your personal dimensions and your personal experience. But as a general guide, just find something that you know going into it, you feel really confident about handling that motorcycle. It will carry you a long way when you get into rougher terrain and you'll actually enjoy it more. When you look at ADV motorcycles, one of the things that really makes it a challenge in terms of making a buying decision is really, what do you want out of it? The smaller and lighter weight, the more aggressive, the better it's gonna be off-road. The bigger and the heavier it is, the more it's gonna handle better on highway sections, and it's always a balance between the two. So you really have to consider, and again, this is just, I go back to that honesty thing. Be honest with yourself where you live, where you're going to ride, what the majority of your riding is going to be, and let that guide your decision to go either bigger or smaller accordingly. Once you have a make and model picked out, then do yourself a favor. The dealers may get annoyed by it, but call around to multiple dealerships that have the bike in stock if you're looking new. If you're looking at used, call multiple Craigslist sellers or multiple dealerships that are selling and really look around and try to find a good deal. All of us like to get something that's nice and at the top end of our budget, but we wanna make sure that it's in the mechanical condition that we expect it to be in and that we're getting the most for our money. Don't be afraid to ask for discounts. If you're buying new, there's always rebates, there's always dealer holdback, and a good dealer will be more than happy to work with you and establish a fair price to get the bike moved. I also highly recommend if you're going to buy new, looking about a year old, if you can find something that is a leftover model year, there's really not that much of a difference between each model year. I know they advertise and they make a lot of changes, but let's face it, none of us are usually the top level riders, so those subtle changes from year to year usually don't make that significant of a difference in the overall experience, and you can save a lot of money by buying a leftover model year. My Triumph Tiger was a demo model when I bought it. The KTM here was a leftover 17 that I bought in 2018. So I'd highly recommend looking for things like that and saving yourself a little bit of money because then you'll have budget left over to buy some of the accessories that you're going to want. Again, coming back to the budget and coming back to how little I would say the bike is in terms of the total budget, 
you start to get into accessories. Just plan for them. You know, whether you're going to be tent camping and you need luggage, whether it's soft luggage or hard luggage, whether it's GPS units, no matter what it is, skid plates, crash protection, you're going to be buying a variety of things after the bike purchase. So again, make sure that you've accommodated for those things in your budget and you'll be not surprised by them when the time comes. You'll leave yourself plenty of room to buy a good solid tent if you're gonna be doing tent camping, which is extremely important. Do not skimp on camping gear if you're going to be doing camping on these trips. It's just not worth it. Your overnight comfort has a lot to do with the day's rides, so it's really an important aspect. Bike protection is another key item. I've covered this in other videos, whether it was my KLR build video, which I'll put a card up top for, or whether it was this KTM 1090 build. You'll quickly see how no matter which bike you buy, the accessories add up afterwards. And so again, if you've accounted for those in your initial budget, then you won't be surprised for it and you'll be pretty happy with your overall purchase. So those are the general guides and tips that I can offer in relation to finding the bike that's right for you. Hopefully some of you have found this video helpful and if you have, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, be sure to click that subscribe button and stay tuned because we've got lots more videos coming on a variety of topics, one of which is also going to be comparing a phone GPS versus the GPS dedicated unit. That's a topic that I'm very interested in. I've been a hardcore GPS only guy for the longest time, but I'm starting to get attracted more and more as the apps develop and get better. And also the hardware is more resilient to the weather and vibration. So I'm gonna be looking into that more. So stay tuned for that. If you have specific questions, if you're looking for a specific motorcycle and I haven't answered some of those questions here, please post your comments below. If you have other thoughts, opinions, ideas on what to look for or think about as you're making an ADV motorcycle buying decision, also put those in the comments below. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video and until next time, take care and ride safe.